Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor. Thank you for your continued support. Now, most of you know that my own wedding day is now right around the time that this video will go live, which got me thinking of a Nancy Drew analysis topic. What is the deal with relationships in the Nancy Drew PC game series? Specifically, I think it would be interesting to go through and figure out how many romantic relationships are actually included in the games, how those relationships are used as part of the storytelling, and finally discuss what on earth is going on with the Nancy, Ned, and Frank love triangle that develops towards the end of the series. So first, as an added disclaimer, the romantic relationships within the Nancy Drew PC games are overwhelmingly heteronormative. Any confirmed romantic relationships are between a cis straight man and a cis straight woman all the way up until Sea of Darkness. In Sea of Darkness, we get the only confirmed LGBTQIA relationship in the series, with Dagny Silva having been married to a woman but since divorced. Because that is how almost all the relationships were defined in the games, this video is going to be from an almost entirely heteronormative perspective. Additional note, there may be mild plot spoilers and relationship spoilers for the following games. You have been warned. So let's begin by outlining the games that include romantic relationships, focusing primarily on physical characters, but sometimes including phone characters or other background characters when they are a large portion of the story. Daryl Gray and Connie Watson dated in Secrets Can Kill and Secrets Can Kill Remastered. Maddie Jensen and Rick Arlen dated in Stay Tuned for Danger. Lillian Weiss also dated Rick. Message in a Haunted Mansion centers around the romance of Lizzie Applegate and Diego Valdez. Jacques Brunet has a fiancé, Isabel, in Treasure in the Royal Tower. Simone Mueller has a partner whose information we can find in her purse in the final scene. Henrik Vanderhoon from Secret of the Scarlet Hand was married, but has since divorced. Red Knot mentions his wife in Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. The Haunted Carousel focuses in part on the complicated relationship between Rolf Kessler and his romantic partner. Hilda Swenson, a highly involved phone friend from Danger on Deception Island, is widowed. Tex Britton and Mary Yazzie are dating in Secret of Shadow Ranch. The story also centers around the forbidden love of Francis Humber and Dirk Valentine. Hugh Penvalin in Curse of Blackmore Manor was divorced, but has since remarried Linda. Jim Archer mentions his wife in Secret of the Old Clock. Additionally, Emily Crandall's parents were married. Lori Gerard and Tino Balducci dated in Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Manette and Dieter von Schwesterkrank dated in Danger by Design. Heather McKay has a crush on Dieter. Mike Mapu is widowed in Creature of Kapu Cave. Ollie Randall mentions his wife in White Wolf of Icicle Creek. Henry Bolet has a girlfriend in Legend of the Crystal Skull. Margarita Foberg in The Phantom of Venice is widowed. Kyler Malloy and Matt Simmons are engaged in Haunting of Castle Malloy. The game centers around their wedding. Kit Foley has a crush on Kyler. Izzy Romero and Leela Yadav both have boyfriends at different points in time in Warnings at Waverly Academy. Pa in Trail of the Twister is widowed. Takai Nagai in Shadow at the Water's Edge is widowed. Miwako Shimisu and Rentoro Ehara are dating. Marcus Boehm and Anya Mittelmeyer dated in The Captive Curse. Carl Weschler has a girlfriend, and Lucas Mittelmeyer's parents are married. Deirdre Shannon is not shy about her crush on Ned Nickerson in Alibi and Ashes. Mason Quinto in The Deadly Device is currently dating. Jessalyn Thornton and Colton Birchfield are engaged in Ghost of Thornton Hall. 
Clara Thornton is divorced. Wade Thornton once dated and still has feelings for Savannah Woodham. Carson Drew is widowed, as is Moira Chisholm, in The Silent Spy. Lena Patel and Patrick Dowsett are dating in The Shattered Medallion. Additionally, Bess Marvin somewhat inexplicably has a major crush on Sunny June. Dagny Silva is divorced in Sea of Darkness. Gunnar Tonneson is widowed. Elizabeth Grimmer's daughter and Magnus Killianson are dating, but it's complicated. From this, we can see that almost every single Nancy Drew game has at least one defined romantic relationship, with only a few games having none, including Ransom of the Seven Ships, obviously, Tomb of the Lost Queen, and Labyrinth of Lies. To sum up, romantic relationships are actually fairly common in the Nancy Drew series, though actual visible partners and two-sided relationships are quite rare. Only in seven games do we actually see or talk to both individuals involved in an active relationship. We have many more games where characters are separated and quite a few games where characters are widowed. There are actually a lot of relationships, but how are they used? The first trend I noticed is using romantic relationships as a component of character development or a definitive character arc. For example, the reveal of Mary Yazi and Tex's relationship adds to Tex's character arc, where instead of being a grumpy, reticent cowboy, he turns into someone who actually has a bit of a sensitive side. This happens with Gunnar Tonneson as well. He goes from being a loud, somewhat abrasive sailor to a genuinely sweet, gentle man, whose lost relationship plays a huge role in his defensive tactics. Romantic relationships are one of the most difficult and simultaneously one of the most rewarding relationships a person can have in life. Your greatest strengths and your greatest weaknesses often rear their heads in this kind of intimate setting. Therefore, having this kind of history for these characters or active development for these characters makes them feel so truly human. The second trend for the use of romantic relationships is as the basis for the mystery itself. We see tragic love stories resulting in the leavings of a magnificent treasure, like Message in a Haunted Mansion, Secret of Shadow Ranch, and Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. In these games, the clues to solving the mystery are entirely linked to the treasure hider's relationship. Think spinning the name Diego on the stairs, reading Dirk's letter to Francis, or finding Camille's crypt. We also see love stories and relational drama playing either a major role in the plot or as a significant subplot. Think games like Stay Tuned for Danger, Haunting of Castle Malloy, Shadow at the Water's Edge, The Captive Curse, Ghost of Thornton Hall, and Sea of Darkness. In these games, the mystery simply would not be as deep, emotional, or meaningful without the complete character work. Think about how past love becomes a huge suspicion factor in Stay Tuned for Danger when narrowing down suspects, or how the disoriented feeling that we get in Haunting of Castle Malloy couldn't have happened if Kyler and Matt didn't frequently argue about his pranks. And finally, we get to the third trend of the romantic relationships in the Nancy Drew series. Drama. While there are other examples, I think the most pervasive case that we can use to illustrate this point is the love triangle that was added by her interactive between Nancy and her longtime boyfriend Ned Nickerson and Frank Hardy. But let's get some context. Nancy and Ned's relationship has gone through many changes and meanderings as the series progressed. Early on, when the series was in its very beginnings in Stay Tuned for Danger, Ned and Nancy closed their phone conversations by saying, I love you. These words combined with how they said them made the couple feel committed and long-term and like they genuinely enjoyed one another. However, this would not last long. In all subsequent games, neither Ned nor Nancy would say I love you again. In fact, subtle changes in the way they spoke to one another began to occur. 
Ned remained supportive, understanding, and protective of Nancy whenever they spoke on the phone. But the conversations felt more like business transactions at times. There are even times where the stability of their relationship is called into question. Like in Secret of Shadow Ranch, when Dave Gregory asks Nancy if she has a steady back home. And Nancy has the option to be really cagey about it. Then, one of the most noticeable shifts in their relationship occurred in Creature of Kapu Cave, when Nancy is speaking with Ned on the phone, sees the Hardy Boys on the beach, and immediately hangs up on Ned, rather unceremoniously. Ned is a good sport about this, but you can tell that his feelings are hurt. This trend of Ned showing care for Nancy continued in The Phantom of Venice, when there is a small subplot around a locket that he gave her as a gift. Ned and Nancy's relationship is repeatedly brought up in this game, and is something that sparks a feeling of envy for many of the characters involved, including Helena Berg and Colin Baxter. Then come a few more mysteries where Ned is just kind of there as the de facto helpful, protective boyfriend, but without a lot of emotional depth. That is, until we get to the captive curse, in which Ned and Nancy have a legitimate fight over the phone, something previously unheard of in their relationship within the games. Nancy can discuss this relationship drama with Anya Mittelmeier and, wait for it, Frank Hardy. During the captive curse, Joe Hardy writes a letter to Nancy in full support of her and Ned's relationship. In so many words, he calls them peanut butter and jelly, a perfect match. Frank, on the other hand, is there to provide a great deal of emotional support. He's empathetic, listens to Nancy's side of the story, and helps out Ned, but is audibly disappointed when Ned and Nancy patch things up. This is when the Her Interactive team really starts to push the narrative of Francie and so doubts about the viability of Ned and Nancy. Meanwhile, Nancy vows to solve a mystery with Ned, which ends up being Alibi and Ashes. When Nancy gets put in jail, Ned works just as hard as Bess and George, doing everything that Nancy says in order to crack the case. He even agrees to go on a date with Deirdre, which he is clearly uncomfortable with, simply because Nancy demands it. Once Nancy gets out of jail, Bess and George stick around as physical characters. Ned, in the meantime, drops off the face of the literal Earth. This comes across as a big ol' snub to Ned, who has been nothing but supportive and wonderful the whole time, only to be forgotten by the developers, and henceforth Nancy, at the end of the game. Likely the next big moment in their relationship is in The Silent Spy, where Nancy follows the literal footsteps of her mother to Scotland. Even though Nancy is in the exact position that her mother was in when she was killed, Ned makes it clear that he believes in Nancy. He will be there for her. He will do whatever she needs, all while being terrified for her safety. He goes up against Carson Drew for Nancy. And then comes Sea of Darkness, where Nancy 100% forgets their anniversary travels to Iceland without saying a single word to Ned, and stands him up at the restaurant where Ned is patiently waiting. Seriously, Nancy? And more accurately, seriously, her interactive team? What did Ned ever do to you? Somehow Ned takes this in stride and even works up the courage to tell Nancy that he loves her, which he, you know, did way back and stay tuned for danger, but we're just going to ignore that apparently. Players can decide how to respond, further fanning the flames of potential discontent. We're still apparently not supposed to know if they're right for one another. And then, and then, deep breaths, what on earth happened in Midnight in Salem? Nancy gets a call from Ned, or she calls him. I honestly don't remember, and it doesn't matter, because the content of this call is just so painfully out of character. All of a sudden, Ned is nonchalant, uninvested in Nancy's adventure, and hanging out with some rando other woman who is being all flirty. Bye, Nancy! And then Frank Hardy strolls in, being so painfully flirtatious and pining for Nancy, 
desperately trying to get her attention. They might as well have just slapped us in the face with a big ol' sign that said, DRAMA, because that's how subtle all of this is. And my big question is, what even is the point? Let me be clear. I don't think there is anything wrong with shipping Nancy and Frank. Yes, they're both detectives, they're both world travelers, they both seek out adventure, they're both smart and driven, they have a lot in common. Objectively, it could be a great romantic relationship. However, if I look objectively at Ned and Nancy, I can also see the potential for a great romantic relationship, at least on Ned's part. Their stability, loyalty, care, understanding, patience, trust, and forgiveness. But apparently, long-lasting relationship foundational necessities are boring. Because that's how the writers decided to portray Ned. They flip the script and make him bland, insignificant, and sometimes even useless, which then becomes how Nancy treats and sees him. So the message we get as fans is that a stable, committed relationship is boring and no fun. Instead, let's add in some relationship drama to get the scripts a little added spice. Let's bring in this needless love triangle, and yes, it is needless, just to try and make the games more interesting. <sighs> From a writing perspective, I honestly get it. The idea is to add a subplot, give a little development to the main character so she feels more real, and keep things interesting and spicy. But the message is, a steady, committed relationship isn't anything worth focusing on. If they really wanted Nancy to be with Frank, then they should have just done it. If Nancy really wants something different in her relationship, then that is a choice that she could absolutely make. But the love triangle persists, and a choice between the two will never, ever be made, because its only purpose is to pull fans back and forth, entrenched in the drama for always and eternity. And that honestly just feels unnecessary to me. I don't come to a mystery game for relationship drama unless it's part of the mystery. So. Those are all my thoughts on the romantic relationships in the Nancy Drew series, particularly the one between Nancy and Ned. But what do you think, fellow detectives? I understand that this topic may result in a lot of feelings, and so I ask that you continue to be as kind and understanding in the comment section as in the past. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and as you share them, please remember to respect all fellow detectives. And finally, if you'd like to come join a wonderful group of patrons over at Mystique Manor, the Patreon page as well as the channel Instagram and Discord are all linked in the description down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.